Right now, a grandmother says she is outraged after the Dane County District Attorney declines to charge a teacher accused of abusing her granddaughter. And a heated moment on the court of a high school basketball game. What the WIAA is saying after a punch is thrown during the fourth quarter. Plus, a close call has parents in the town of Beloit worried for their child's safety. Their plea to drivers when it comes to approaching school buses. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. The Dane County District Attorney says no criminal charges will be filed against the Madison teacher accused of abusing a student. News 3 Now has been following this investigation for several weeks, and we have live team coverage involving today's decision. We start with Jamie Perez, who spoke with the girl's family, who says they are outraged by the decision. Well, the district attorney says he reviewed the 80 page police report and the surveillance video of this incident after an 11 year old girl claimed a behavioral coach ripped braids out of her hair during an altercation. Even after reviewing everything, the DA says there was no crime committed. The girl's family says they had a feeling the behavioral coach would not be charged from the beginning. Anybody that has a parent and not even that anybody that has a heart. A heart for kids would not allow this type of behavior. LaRonda Brandt says she's outraged that the district attorney Ishmael Ozan said no criminal charges would be filed against Robert Mueller Owens after he allegedly ripped braids out of her granddaughter's head during a fight in the hallway at school. As a person of color growing up in this community, attending public and private schools, and now parenting two children of color in this community, I am personally aware of the racial inequities that historically and currently paint a very different experience for persons of color living in Madison. After addressing concerns that have been brought up throughout this investigation regarding racism, Ozan says his decision was made purely based on the evidence. And in this case, I do not believe a crime was committed. The girl's mother says she's seen the surveillance video from that day and that the DA's decision is an indicator of the systematic racial disparities. And it is sad, but it also teaches her a lesson that white people are privileged. And she learned that at an early age. In the police report, two staff members who witnessed the altercation were interviewed. One of them says Muller Owens pushed the girl out of the door, which started a fight between the student and teacher. When she tried to get between them, she said Muller Owens threw them both on the ground and said there was no justification for what he did. The second teacher said she saw the student throw punches at Muller Owens without any prior physical contact and that Muller did, quote, exactly what she would have done if she were in his place. I feel like in this situation, that she did not follow directions as to step out. She should have followed directions, but it did not deserve for her to be beaten by an educator. I feel right. like he lost his cool. Now that surveillance video is not being released to us right now. Madison School District will have to decide what steps to take from here on out. Regardless of what they decide to do, the girl's family says they're not done and they're not letting this go until they feel that justice is done. Jamie, thank you. After this incident, Muller Owens was placed on leave with the school district, but what's next for him and his job is still up in the air right now. Amy Reed joins us now live from Whitehorse Middle School with what the Madison School District is saying tonight. Amy? Today, the district said that for now, Muller Owens is staying on leave, but before they make any further decisions, they have to get through that 80-page police report. In a statement just after the incident, the district said Muller Owens will not return to Whitehorse Middle School, but now they'll have to determine if he broke with district policy and his handling of the situation. Regardless, a parent here said Muller Owens should not return to any classroom. You want your kids to feel safe. You know, you want your kids to feel feel safe coming into school. This is a place where um, we expect our kids to be safe, um, teachers to be um, keeping our kids safe and things like that. So when situations situation like this happen, it becomes um, worrisome a little bit. In the district's policy regarding use of restraint, the school board says it does not condone the use of restraint or seclusion by employees when dealing with students and unreasonable use of physical force is expressly prohibited. However, later in the policy, it says there are times when reasonable restraint is necessary. Now, with those 17 different accounts of what happened, the district will likely have to decide if that use of force was reasonable. And right now, they aren't sure when that determination will be made. All right, Amy Reed, live at Whitehorse Middle School. Amy, thank you. Let's check your first alert forecast now. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield. Dave? Well, a lot of sunshine on this Tuesday, Eric. We have mostly cloudy skies in place right now, and 
those clouds this afternoon kind of capped off our temperatures in the middle to upper teens. Still an improvement from yesterday, though. We still do have those clouds with us on the WISC TV Skycam. Currently at 13 degrees, but with a west northwest wind at nine miles per hour, it feels more like one in Madison right now. 16, the temperature in Janesville, 12 in Monroe, down to 11 in Platteville, and 13 in Boswell. With that wind out of the north and west, about 8 to 15 miles per hour. A bit breezy at times throughout this Tuesday. Wind chills are right around zero and actually below zero already in spots like Lone Rock, Mineral Point, Platteville and Viroqua. So wind chills will continue to fall through the single digits below zero and that's where they'll remain for much of this evening into the overnight hours. It could feel like minus five to minus ten as we start off our Wednesday, but I have details on a slow but steady warm up on the way and what to expect with this weekend's weather maker in your news three now first alert forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Dave, thank you. An incident at a high school basketball game serving as a reminder to practice good sportsmanship. This incident happened during the fourth quarter of the Edgar against Rocholt boys playoff basketball game after a shot was missed. Two opposing players get tangled up on the play, go to the ground. As the players are getting up, a punch is thrown. The referees immediately stop the game. The players are separated. Whoa. The Rocholt player was ejected from the game. The WIA did not comment specifically on this incident, but reflected on the importance of good sportsmanship, saying players need to keep their cool. A family in the town of Beloit is asking drivers to watch out for school buses after a scary situation happened in front of their home. Adam Duxter joins us from our bureau at the Janesville Gazette with their story. Adam? Well, Charlotte, it's a growing issue in the town of Beloit that's already resulted in one hit and run accident so far this year. But for one family, driving dangerously around school buses literally hits close to home. <laughs> Matthew Ahrens and his family live in the town of Beloit. His son Mason is in 4K. Last year we actually took him to school ourselves. This year is the first year he went on the bus. But what should be an exciting time for the family has turned out to be scary and frustrating. I just don't know why people can't stop. This is a video from the Aaron's home last Monday as a bus goes to drop Mason off from school. The car following behind passing illegally and dangerously right near Aaron's wife and son. If that would have been two seconds later, I mean, they could have been getting off the bus. I mean, he could have got hit by a car. Um, Tons and tons of stuff just run through your head. In early February, a town of Beloit school bus was hit by a driver trying to pass. In the month since, the district says there have been 90 violations similar to this one. I mean, it's horrible because you just never know what's going to happen anymore. I mean, you put your kids on the bus and expect people to stop for when the stop sign comes out, but it, they don't. Police in town say it's a matter of educating drivers. When they see a school bus and the school bus is flashing red, uh, lights, that means stop. Okay, you can't pass the bus. Ow. Aaron says he's glad no one in his family was hurt, but is worried about the future. On a residential street with minimal traffic, I mean, very minimal traffic. I don't know if people are just in a hurry to get somewhere, but I don't think you should really put kids' lives at risk. And Aaron's was able to turn over that security footage to police who used it to find and ticket that driver a f offense of roughly $300. Now, the Beloit Turner School District says they are probably going to be adding some security cameras to the outside of their buses later this spring. Adam, thank you. Child abuse charges against a woman selected by the governor for his cabinet are resurfacing, raising some questions about whether she'll be confirmed by the state Senate. Governor Evers chose Dawn Krim to lead the Department of Safety and Professional Services. Court documents from 2005 show Krim jabbed the pen into her then five-year-old son's hand, causing it to bleed and be left with several puncture marks. She was charged with felony child abuse, and the case resulted in a deferred prosecution. Krim previously worked for Evers at the state's education agency, and she is also a former assistant coach for the UW women's basketball program. Today, Evers told reporters Krim is a, quote, extraordinary human being. Yes, I've known Don for, for several years, and uh, uh, I do stand behind her. The, the, uh, uh, when she, it was investigated, that incident, they found the charges to be unsubstantiated. Republican Senate Majority Leader Scott Fitzgerald is calling these new revelations, quote, deeply unsettling and says they will likely lead to questions from Republican senators about whether Krim can serve in the role. 
A Senate committee is scheduled to hold a public hearing to discuss her confirmation next Wednesday. Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call has joined his first multi-state lawsuit, signing onto an action challenging the Trump administration's attempts to set up obstacles for women seeking abortions. A coalition of 21 attorneys general, including Call, filed that lawsuit today. It seeks to block a federal rule barring taxpayer-funded family planning clinics from referring patients to abortion providers set to go into effect in May. Call says the rule would result in less access to health care and interfere with the doctor-patient relationship. Madison is looking to purchase 20 additional electric cars. The purchase is part of a collaboration with the city and other partners like Madison Gas and Electric and Madison College. A state grant is helping cover the cost of the vehicles. Right now, the city uses 1,400 vehicles. That includes police cars, fire trucks, and sanitation vehicles. 30 of which are electric. More cheese, butter, and yogurt makers than ever before are taking part in the U.S. Championship Cheese Contest started today in Green Bay. It is considered the largest of its kind in the country. Organizers say there were more than 2,500 entries this year. That's an 11% increase compared to the last time the event was held in 2017. 35 states are represented. The cheeses are judged on flavor, body, texture, color, finish, and packaging. In 2017, the champion was the reserve black pepper Bella Vitano made by Sartori of Plymouth, Wisconsin. An area school district is practicing mindfulness in the classroom. And the benefits that students at Sun Prairie are seeing from brain breaks. That's next at 6. Our lives can get pretty busy, which is why it's important to sometimes just take a moment to breathe. Taking a brain break is helping students in Sun Prairie focus and ultimately learn more. Amanda Quintana has the story. Close your eyes, rest your hands gently, and allow your shoulders to relax. Mindfulness, the ability to be present in who and where you are. It's something many of us don't have a chance to do during a hectic day. But for these Westside Elementary kindergartners, it's part of their lesson plan. Once you see them get calm and get ready, that's when optimal learning can happen. Their teacher says using a simple meditation app twice a day has made a huge difference in her classroom. You, got it. you might think being calm would be difficult for a energetic five-year-old, but with a little practice, they now depend on it. They really got into it and 
If they have to miss it for some reason, they're very upset. <laughs> they don't want to miss it. Let's go. Ooh. Just down the hall, Miss Roganbauer's first graders let loose with a brain break. The brain breaks just help us kind of stop and refocus. It also gives us like a time of the day where we can kind of be silly and then bring it back to our learning again. Also taking advantage of the power of mindfulness. Blow it off. Breathing with a little creativity. Practicing mindfulness has been around for years and years, but it's relatively new to the world of academia, especially for elementary students. But Westside already has a room dedicated to it for any student to just take a break. And you came back, and how was your attitude? Good. And back and ready to what? Work and learn. For them realizing, yes, I need a break, I'm going to go take a break, and them realizing that they're ready to come back is really powerful, too, that this is a reset for your learning to come on back. A tool they're taking home and can use whenever to bring them back to what's important. I will always be kind. Amanda Quintana, News 3 Now. The Sun Prairie School District wants to get all of their classrooms to take advantage of mindfulness, using Westside Elementary as a great example of how it can help students learn. They even have yoga classes on Fridays. Teachers say everyone, even adults, can benefit from mindfulness. And just ahead, a reminder from utility crews as our cold spell lingers on. And will temperatures warm up in time for the weekend? Dave joins us after the break with our first alert forecast. The Madison Water Utility is reminding people to protect their pipes in what seems like a never-ending winter. Now, even though it's March, officials say it's important to keep your winter guidelines in place to keep your pipes from freezing. They say to set your thermostat at at least 55 degrees. Keep a close eye on pipes that are especially close to windows, doors, or other areas that are more susceptible to colder temperatures. City of Madison, by the way, has had 78 water main breaks just since the start of the calendar year, and that includes Four of them just yesterday. Dave Caulfield joining us now with a look at a forecast that at least by the end of the weekend, we're talking 40 degrees, right? Slowly but surely, we're inching towards more normal-ish mm -hmm. temperatures, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, but this time of year, you really only get two options. You get 
cold and sunny mm -hmm. or warm with strings attached with some rain and snow and we'll get both of those over the next couple of days. We got the first option today, the cold and sunny with temperatures in the single digits in the morning. Um, the low temperature close to zero and then highs were in the middle to upper teens. So at least that's an improvement from yesterday. Some high temperatures across the area 19 in Janesville, 17 in Watertown, 18 in Mineral Point. No 20 showing up for today. I think we'll get there tomorrow and temperatures are pretty close to that right now across southern Wisconsin in Platteville under Queen Bee Radio Skycam looking at mostly cloudy skies. Similar story on the Edgewater Skycam in Madison. The clouds will clear out a little bit, allowing those temperatures to once again dip through the uh, double digits into the single digits close to zero by the time we get to you later tonight. Our high today of 17, 20 to 25 degrees below normal for this time of year. But hey, yesterday we were 30 degrees below normal. Improvement. Yes, we can do it. Let's keep going over the next couple of days. So as I mentioned, temperatures are pretty close to where they were for their highs. 13 in Madison, 16 in Janesville and 12 in Juneau. With that wind chill, though, it feels closer to zero in Madison, below zero in Lone Rock, Mineral Point and Platteville just about two weeks until hopefully all of this is behind us when spring starts on March 20th. Hopefully it doesn't feel like the longest two weeks of our lives as we get there. But temperatures remaining chilly as we head into this evening and will be cold once again overnight. We're dropping to near zero to start off our Wednesday and then for tomorrow highs will be near 20. Maybe a few snowflakes here and there really not going to do anything to us to impact our weather at all. As we get into tomorrow highs are on Thursday, excuse me, highs will be a little bit warmer than they were on Wednesday with highs in the mid 20s and I think that uh, chance of snow misses us to the south. It will feel like about zero to minus 10 as we start off our Wednesday. We do have alert days in the forecast for that second option this time of year where we get a little bit of a warm up. In fact, milder temperatures on the way for this weekend, but we have alert days in the forecast for Saturday and Sunday. Some heavy rain is possible at times on Saturday. Could be some minor flooding concerns because the snow won't have time to melt before about an inch of rain is possible in spots. Then that rain will mix with snow on Sunday as cold air wraps around into that system on the way and could provide us with some snow. So still some uncertainty when it comes to that weekend system. We're keeping a close eye on it. As we take a look at the rest of the 10-day forecast, we are looking a little bit warmer to start next week. Quiet for Monday and Tuesday for another system may come our way. Christian Yelich can certainly hit, but can he act? We'll look back at his appearance on Magnum P.I. in sports.
You're going to pay between one and six dollars more per ticket to see the Packers at Lambeau Field this season. The spin by the Packers, the average 3.1 percent increase is the smallest in 10 years. Per game prices go from 11, uh, 111 dollars for a regular season game if you sit in the end zone seats and it ranges up to 142 dollars a game for seats between the 20 yard lines. To buy Packers season tickets, the payment is due March 30th. There's also a pay as we play option to lock into tickets for the playoffs if you register online. Look for the invoices for current season ticket holders in the mail this week. Badger women's hockey team remains second behind Minnesota in the national rankings this week, but the Badgers and Gophers could meet in the WCHA championship game this weekend at Ritter Arena in Minneapolis. Semifinals are Friday. Minnesota plays Minnesota Duluth at 2, while the Badgers face Ohio State at 5. The winners play for the league championship Sunday afternoon at 2. Last weekend, Wisconsin disposed of St. Cloud State in short order. Now the challenge is to keep their focus against the number three seeded Buckeyes. You know, we've, we've gone through the first hurdle where we beat St. Cloud in a couple games, and now we have the right to play Ohio State, and it should be a m good matchup. I mean, most teams at this time of the year are playing their best hockey, uh, and so the hard part is, uh, you know, the team that wins uh, is excited to go play for a championship. Uh, the team that loses has to come home, and so uh, it's, a, it's a good learning opportunity for our team, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. The Milwaukee Bucks five game road trip ended in a 114 105 loss in Phoenix last night. It's the first time in the season the same team has beaten the Bucks twice, and it's the first time this season the Bucks have lost two games in a row. They're back home Thursday night to play the Indiana Pacers at Fies Serve Forum. The Brewers home opener a little over three weeks from the day after a day off yesterday. They're back on the field against the Colorado Rockies today. And the best news of the day for Milwaukee, the pitching of Corbin Burns. He gets the start, goes three innings, doesn't allow a run, struck out four Rockies hitters. They're trying to convert Burns from a reliever to a starter this season. And today seems like it was a big step toward that. Final score was Brewers one, Rockies nothing. Tyler Saladino drove in the only run in the seventh. And did you see NL MVP Christian Yelich on Magnum P.I. last night on CBS? He showed up at practice for the Little League World Series champions from Hawaii. He stepped out of the golf cart to hang with the fellas for a while. Yelich says he's not the best actor ever, but he's not the worst either. Here's how he delivered his lines meeting the Little Leaguers. What's up, guys? How we doing? I love watching you guys play. You guys did awesome. Hey, Rick, you want to throw some BP while I talk to the kids? Been known to throw a curveball or two in my day. You sure you want to deal with this heat? Let's see what you got. All right, let's do it. So Rick thinks he can throw a pitch that Yelich can't hit, but not so shockingly, even in his golf shirt and jeans, Yelich found a pitch he liked and in slow motion hit it to downtown Honolulu. That was his appearance on camera. But at the end of the show, we learned he asked the lovely Juliet Higgins out for a date, which Higgins accepted, at least on the show. Oh, I don't nice. think the awards are coming anytime <laughs> soon, but, you know, it's nice to see them. Only on the field are those awards coming. Dave Caulfield, final check of the forecast. The weather looks so nice in that shot. It really <laughs> does. Definitely. Let's go there. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Temperature is remaining chilly tonight. All right, thanks for joining us at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10.